fuck. Well, I, I should be in front of a green screen right now, but I'm not. Why? Because we hit a perfect shitstorm recently. Where to begin? Let's see. Well, first it started with us trying to get everything all set up in the uh, server room. Now, I did a, uh, I, I recently did a video, I have not released it, but I was showing off what we were doing in the room where I was going to be doing some uh, video work on in the green screen for some new videos and, and things I was going to do. And um, we got the extra set of lights, and we've got the green screen working really good now. Well, all that went to freaking hell. Uh, we tried to update the server to Windows 10 Pro 64-bit, the, the, the 2004 update. Well, that wouldn't apply, and we went and we searched to find out why, and we tried to make it update. And the machine just completely and utterly freaked the fuck out. Eventually, we did get the 2004 update installed, after doing a full reinstall of Windows 10, and having to muck around with the BIOS, and, re and flashing the BIOS on the machine with a updated BIOS. We finally got the motherfucker installed, but we had to wipe everything to do it. <sighs> And all sorts of other shit just basically blew apart after that. Oh, let's see. Um, stable bit drive pool blew a gasket because our BIOS was changed. So the key was no longer good for that machine. We didn't know that we had to deactivate the key. For, uh, we didn't know we had to deactivate the key for the software. And so now we had to get another another key for that software, which was sixty bucks for it. Stablebit is a really good software tool. It is a much better alternative to RAID and Microsoft Spaces. What it does is it, it gives you all the benefits of RAID with striping, with you know with, with striping. And it can also create backups of your uh, of your stuff without altering the disk partition. Whenever you do RAID where you are doing striping or if you're doing RAID 0 where you're basically making multiple drives one drive in Windows, that mucks around with the partitions. So if a disk goes bad, if a disk goes bad and it stops working, you've lost all your stuff unless you're striping. If you're striping, then you just put in a new disk and the data that has been mirrored on another drive gets um, applied on the new drive and you got all your stuff back. But when the array is down in RAID, you cannot access your files at all. This is different. This does not alter the partitions. So, if the array goes down, you can still access your stuff, because it's still there. What it does is it, it balances out the, the drive, balances out how much space it uses in each drive, whether you are just doing, you know, spanning multiple drives to make it one big drive, or um, doing striping where you have, you know, so much space that you're actually using and then the other half is for a mirror in case one of your drives goes bad. It can do that. It can also back up your stuff onto another onto other uh, storage medium. It can even do it to the cloud if you have all the, all the components. It's got a lot of other really neat features to it. It can it can read the smart data on your hard drives to determine if your drives are still good. You know, to see, you know, these really big hard drives, it's normal for them to have a certain number of errors on them. You know, it's normal. Every large drive has a certain number of read, read and write errors. Because they compensate for them. They do error correction. 
Now, if they start having an abnormally large number of errors, that means that spaces on the drive are starting to become unreadable, unwritable, and the drives are having to move data around, around those bad areas. And if those number of errors, rewrite errors, start getting really high, that means your drive's starting to fail. And Smart's been a part of hard drives for a long time. It can also determine the health of your SSDs. Because we've got a, I mean, we've got a 512 SSD in that machine. So we had to reinstall that, and we updated the USB drive drivers. And that installed a new firmware. And now our driver rays are freaking out. So we've got uh, we've got four MediaSonic driver rays. Two of them hold eight drives, and two of them hold four. And uh, we have them on USB 3.1 to SATA adapters. Uh, we, we had to do it that way because we have two graphics cards in our machine and there's no slots available to install a eSOTA card and you need a very specific eSOTA card in order to drive these boxes. You need them with a very specific chipset and the ability to do um, the drive multiplexing so it can drive multiple drives off of a single ESADA port. Well, we can't use that card. Well, we are sort of kind of going around that. We should have gone ESADA, but we're going a different route. We're getting a USB 3.1 card. This thing is like 150 bucks. It's a server part. It's a, it has four USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports on it that can deliver 10 megabits a second per port. Uh, this thing is designed specifically to drive um, USB 3.1 SSDs. It's designed specifically for that, for really high bandwidth SSD external storage. And we're going to be putting hard drives on it. So we're not even going to come close to saturating that. So we're going to be able to operate those drives at high speed. And it's going to be a little more reliable than it is off the motherboard. Because right now it, it's freaking out a little bit. We had a, um, a USB 3, a one I bought a long time ago. A USB 3 Blu-ray drive that we were using to... Um, you know, rip stuff and convert stuff over for Plex. And that was just completely freaking out on the USB bus. It was going on and it was it was going on and off. Dinner 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 you know that you know that problem if you have USB issues. And we finally found a port that it won't do that on. It wasn't do that doing that before. The other problem is is when the machine shut down, it wasn't cutting power to the uh, USB 3.1 ports, so the MediaSonic drive bays were not properly powering off. So, problems, 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 and now, now, oh joy, my VR is fucking up. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with my VR headset. VR headset's working fine. I played Minecraft with it. Problem is, I can't stream the Windows 10 Minecraft because it doesn't uh, produce a a video window with output that I can actually link link into with OBS or OBS Studio, which is what I'm using here, or Streamlabs OBS. It doesn't do that. And when I try to launch games in Steam VR, which I've been able to successfully do just fine with this headset. This is a Windows Mixed Reality headset, but Steam VR has been working perfectly fine until a recent Steam VR update. And I tried to launch No, no Man's Sky, which I've played with this headset before. And it's not launching in the headset. No VR games are launching in the headset except for the Windows Mixed Reality stuff. 
and this was after a Steam VR update. The Windows Mixed Reality stuff didn't update recently. It was only the Steam VR stuff that updated. So I had to put in a support ticket to Steam telling them, hey, since your latest update, um, VR games are not launching in the headset. It keeps saying, plug your headset into the uh, same video card that your primary display is on. Okay, I only have one video card in this machine. Joys! Joys! Anyway... Uh, there has to be a reason why this is happening. There's gotta be. There's got to be a good reason why this is happening. Something's going to happen. Anyway, that's why you haven't seen any new content from me in a while. And if I can't get this VR thing figured out, I'm probably going to have to delay future episodes of Minoto Otaku Tours Japan, unfortunately. I might have to borrow Tigra's... Uh, might have to borrow Tiger's bat, uh, Vive for a while and use it in the uh, server room to uh, get things done. Uh, once once we get that new USB 3.1 card in and we get the drive working and we get StableBit installed and get the array, arrays back online and get everything installed and working on that machine, uh, I'm going to start doing some various content in there. Um, we're going to start recording some green screen, st uh, green screen stuff. Uh, I'm going to resurrect Bike with Mike. That series I was doing uh, early mornings live streams. I'm going to resurrect that because I've got that in there. Um, I may also... I. Probably not on YouTube because of the whole fucking copyright thing. But uh, probably over on BitChute and maybe uh, Storyfire. I might uh, sign up on Storyfire and post some videos there. Do some learning music. Uh, we've got, um, I think it's Synthasia. Yeah, Synthasia. Uh, we've got that. It's for learning piano. You, know, you plug your um, USB MIDI port piano into a computer. I've got my old laptop, which was my old Linux laptop with Windows 10 on it. I am sorry. Uh, on it, we've got uh, Synthasia on it for my keyboard. Tigra has Rocksmith. We've got that working finally. Well, that was a that was a struggle getting that to work without Ubisoft's approved cable. So we got that working. He's learning guitar. He's got two guitar, two electric guitars. He's got one that's a hybrid electric and acoustic one. And I've got his old um, his old keyboard, his old USB MIDI keyboard that he got a long time ago for GarageBand and never did anything with it. But it still works. It's a um, it's an M Audio device. M Audio still makes some really good MIDI keyboard uh, devices for working with Fruity Loops, you know, FL Studio, and, and some things like that. And Synthasia, it works with um, it works with MIDI files, and you play along with it in the software, learning to play various songs. And so we found like a, a long playlist of like 400 and something different songs and each one had in the, in the video description on YouTube, each one had a thing where you can download the MIDI files to uh, import into Synthasia so that you could learn to play those songs. And then it's a ton of stuff. It's a ton of stuff. Everything from, from themes from Final Fantasy VII to current music, classics, things from the 80s, 
um, you know, the Dragonborn comes from Skyrim, uh, all sorts of things. I think, I think, even, I think, um, toss a coin to your Witcher, it was in there. <laughs> so, uh, I may, we may start doing some video about, you know, doing music and stuff in there. Um, as some some content I may be working on for that and hopefully I can get the VR stuff back up and working I may even see if there's somehow some way I can get a, uh, a Vive maybe um, they should be cheaper now the uh, Vives they should be cheaper I might have to do a GoFundMe for that because I I don't get enough to be able to do something to get something like that. So I might have to, I might have to do a GoFundMe for that. But uh, that's what's going on. Um, I'm going to be doing some No Man's Sky uh, stuff, showing off the new update, uh, possibly soon. Uh, and unless, unless. Uh, Star Citizen 310 finally drops. It's in the PTU now for Evocati and uh, Concierge Wave 1. Um, it'll be accessible soon, possibly within this week. So if that happens, then I'm going to start, start doing some more Star Citizen stuff. Because the way this, this update is looking, the 310 update, is looking really promising. Uh, the flight model's been changed, so the ships, it way, way it's been described by, you know, I, befo I follow a bunch of different um, Star Citizen YouTubers. I follow Cobra TV. I've been following him since the No Man's Sky days. Uh, Cobra TV, Eradicator, Board Gamer, I follow those. Those are the biggest ones for Star Citizen right now. And all of them have said that the flight model is really good now. They have changed things to where the ships feel more weighty. Uh, before, the thrusters were at operating at just maximum 100% all the time. So when you hit the thrust, you're automatically just shooting off at full speed. Now, now your ship actually has weight. And the wind factors in too. The wind in the atmosphere of planets will now buffet your ship and push you around. And uh, the better your ship's aerodynamics are, the better you'll handle an atmosphere like like ships like the Avenger Titan, which I have, will fly a lot better than say an Aurora or a Cutlass Black or possibly even the Pisces, though the Pisces has small wings on it. We'll see how that handles. Uh, especially at New Babbage. Because there are some pretty lucrative box missions that go to that go to New Babbage where you have to land on rooftop landing pads and the wind is just howling up there. That's gonna make landing in a Pisces really interesting might have to do that in the um, Avenger Titan be able to handle that kind of uh, kind of wind. Tiger is kind of worried about how the uh, Carrick is going to handle the atmosphere now and in space the ships handle uh, very differently too because the thrusters are not all at 100% they're not all at maximum thrust so it takes a little while for them to you know, move you so they should feel a lot more like the ships from Elite Dangerous. And if that's true, a lot of people who are on the fence about leaving Elite Dangerous and going over to Star Citizen are going to make the jump. There's a lot of them. We follow a lot of Elite Dangerous um, streamers as well. And all of them in the comments, uh, people who watch them, elite dangerous people also in the elite dangerous forums there are people in there who have been hardcore elite dangerous players for years saying if star citizen 
ship's flight model changes and they make the ships feel like those from Elite Dangerous, they are leaving the game and going over there. And it looks like CIG has done it. So Elite Dangerous is about to lose a whole ton of players. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on, so look forward to uh, a lot of that. And uh, I'm going to, as soon as we're able to do the green screen, I'm going to start doing the whole uh, Zorch Central gaming news stuff. I know I haven't been doing it lately, but uh, I'm going to be getting into that once we get the use of the green screen going. Uh, I'm also going to be getting that tool from XSplit that lets you replace the background on the webcam. I may have to get a better webcam, but this one is shit. As you might notice from the from my uh, lack of video quality with this thing. It's a Logitech webcam, but it's shit. Um, it's a little $30 piece of shit. So, uh... <sighs> anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Mike the Zorch. See you guys next time.